Hello my friends and welcome to an episode about color secrets. Today I'm going to show you how to select and organize your colors. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. So as you can see here I have a very uh, colorful photo and then I have a second layer with a design. You can see there is a hole in the layer that has a reason that I will show you right now. And um, if I disable both of them the background is a white canvas, which will also be important in a second because what we're going to look at first is our color picker tool. And the color picker tool up here has a source, global and current layer. Global means that it will select whatever is on the screen right now, even if it is outside of Affinity Photo. And that's very important to know. So you can go to another window or even for um, your own screen. For example, I can click here on the top right where you have this color picker icon. You can click and drag and this will give you a little bit of a zoom. So it shows you directly the area um, where you are clicking with this one pixel. And I can go down here on windows, on these different windows icons. I can select a color from down here. So you could uh, resize your window and select uh, um, colors from a photo or from a website outside of Affinity Photo, so that's pretty interesting. And another thing that's important for global source is uh, that, for example, if I reduce the opacity of this layer here, it will pick the colors as a combination of these two layers as you can see them on the screen. So you can see that right now I have a dark brown instead of the bright orange in the background or the dark blue in the foreground because this is the mix as we see it on the screen which is very different from source current layer. Because now when I click on the background, even if I click at the same area, it will give me a bright orange color because it's just picking from that one layer that I have selected. And equally, if I go back to the other layer, it will only pick from that layer. And that means if I pick here inside of that hole, it's gonna give me a white color. Reason for that is because there are no pixels, so it will pick the color of the document background. In this case, that's a white color. Okay, so this is how these different sources work, how you can use them. Uh, and they have specific uses, but it's very useful to have them. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, that you have this radius here. And you can see... It can either select just one pixel point or it can create an average of uh, a number of pixels and will tell you how big that number of pixels is. And the downside of that, by the way, is that it does not give you a preview of how big that area is. So even if I drag out this tool again and you would think that in the middle the selection area would be bigger or smaller, this does sadly not happen. So you don't really have an idea. You have a little bit by uh, go to uh, by trial and error to actually find out uh, what color you're given. But there's a little workaround that you can do. I will zoom in here a little bit. What you can do is you just use your uh, selection tool and you select an area that you want to have and say, okay, I want a mix of all these colors in here. And you go to filters, blur and average. And this, whoops, I'm on the wrong layer, sorry. Filters, blur, average. You can see this is creating an average of these colors. Be sure to know that this will actually change the layer and the picture in the layer. So undo the steps after you have selected the color. That's pretty important. Otherwise, you're going to mess up your picture. Okay, so... Now that we know how to pick colors by hand, there is another choice that we can pick colors automatically. That's also really cool. So with swatches selected up here as the window, and by the way, if you don't see these windows on your screen, go to view and then studio, and you will find all possible windows in here. And you just make a hook next to swatches so you can see the swatches window. Very easy. And uh, in this little menu up here, you can see you can create a palette from document. From document means this is the document that you are working on right now and have open on your screen. And there are two more choices that says as application palette or as document palette. What that means is 
When the palette is created as an application palette, it is saved in Affinity Photo itself, so you can use it to all documents that you're working on now or in the future. It will be reachable in Affinity Photo everywhere as a palette. While as a document palette, this palette will only be saved with this specific Affinity Photo document. So that's pretty important to use. Uh, pretty important to know, sorry. So let's click on as document palette. And this will automatically give us a palette of selected colors from that picture. The downside to this method, by the way, is that you have no way to decide how many colors they uh, should be or from what area the colors should be chosen from. But there is, of course, a workaround as always. So you can again go up here and say create palette from image. And if you create palette from image, it lets you select an image. So I will select, for example, this image as you have seen before and see, hey, I want the colors from this design because they look cool and I want to use them in my design, which is a legit way uh, to go about designing things, of course, unless they are copyright protected colors for a brand, for example. Um, and down here you have number of colors. So you can choose up to 256 colors. And you can hit the preview button to see what you get. In this case, let's take 10 colors, hit preview. You can see, there we go. We get some of the most important colors here. So we have uh, the choice that we want to have. And again, we can select, do we want to save it in the application or do we want to save it as a document palette or do we even add it to the current selected palette which is the selected palette you have over here in the swatches. I will choose document. So this will create a new palette that's just usable in this document. I click create and you can see up here, this will give it the name of the file. So you can change that with this palette selected. You can go up here and say rename palette and just say art design pal. And then next time you know what that is when you open your document. And now you see down here, you have all these different boxes. By the way, they still have the name of the file. So maybe you can also, if, you, if that's important for you, you can rename the file before you create the palette. Okay, so now there are two important things to notice here and that is we have the colors here and they are in little boxes and these little boxes are just fill colors and there are also global colors so you can change them by right clicking on them and say make global color and then they have this little white um, edge here or, or corner white corner and a global color is something very specific and this means, uh, for example, when I use my rectangle tool down here on the left and I create a rectangle, I click here on fill color, select swatches, and then select this global color. And let's make some more. Whoops. Let's make some more of those. You can see now when I double click here and I change the color to something else that all of the instances, all of the objects where I have used this color will also change. And this means uh, the word global because the information of this color is globally spread to all of the other objects that are using it. Or you could in the other direction say that all the objects can globally access this one color information, which is very different from the normal color that just that is just a fill color. So let's make another shape here. Um, select swatches and now the pink as a fill color. And now you can see if I change this color, nothing happens to our rectangle here. It doesn't change in color because this is just a fill color. It's not connected to anything. By the way, uh, before we have spoken about the color picker and there is one more important thing to know and this is how do I actually add the colors to the palette. That's also very important. Uh, so for example, I'm going to go up here and I am going to create a new document palette. You can see right now it's unnamed and I'm using my color picker again to pick some colors that I like. So I click here and you can see automatically 
the color is up here. And now you have these two little palette icons here and they will tell you, you can either add it as a fill or you can add it as a global color, which are the two things that I explained right now. Of course, if you want to, you can also add them as both. You can click here and then you can click here. You can see now you have them both and you can do them with as many colors if you like, uh, that you like or that you select from the document. Um, yeah, and they are saved in this palette that of course you can rename uh, for the design for your purpose. Also again, like uh, be sure up here that you select the right source and the right radius so you don't get kind of strange color results that you actually didn't want to have in the first place. So if something strange is happening with your color selection tool, just check up here where the selection is coming from, which radius are you using. Okay, thank you very much for watching. This is how you select colors and how to store them and organize them. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two videos per week. If you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your creations and other great rewards. Thank you very much and see you in the next episode. Bye.